I want to flip it over to the Patriots. They finally found something in Bailey Zappi after clinging to Mac Jones far longer than they should have. I don't know what you believe. We haven't had this conversation about what's going to happen when the season ends. I think that if we were creating odds of Bill Belichick's future, returning to the Patriots as the head coach next year would be the longest and the most remote wager on the board. What do you think is going to happen, though? How do you think this is all going to play out? We're just about a month away. I think exactly a month away from day after week 18 when things start to move. What do you think is going to occur? My gut feeling was zero inside information. Zero. My gut feeling is that Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick are going to create a slightly tense united front and Kraft is going to thank Belichick for everything and Belichick uh, is going to say he wants to keep coaching. You know, Mike, did you notice last night that was Bill Belichick's 332nd career victory, including playoffs. That puts some 15 games behind 15 wins behind Don Shula, which means he's got to win 16 games now to be the winningest coach of all time. And for those who question whether he will coach, and I don't know what he's going to do. I haven't talked to Bill Belichick in 17 years, so I don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> but I can just tell you this. <laughs> of all the people I've ever met, you know, did I ever tell you about my trip to Bill Belichick's home in a leafy Massachusetts suburb uh, before he got divorced and walk into his house. And I wanted to see his football library. And we walk into this library and there are, I think, 900 books all on this one wall. And it's all about the history, all things related to the history of pro football. You know, biographies of Newt Rockne and, you know, books about the wing T and about the history of scouting and things like that. So this this person is more of a football savant, a football history savant. He's the Doris Kearns Goodwin of people who love pro football. And to think that that record doesn't mean the world to him, I think you'd probably be kidding yourself. And I'm not saying he coaches just to break records, but I think he believes that it'd be a pretty cool thing after the team things that he's accomplished, you know, the Super Bowls with the Giants uh, as defensive coordinator, the six Super Bowls with the Patriots. I think he thinks that, okay, I'm going to get an individual record that I think it's wrong to say it'll never be broken. Most records usually are, but that may never be broken. 348 victories or however many he ends up with. So I think that he and Robert Kraft understand at the end of the day that it's about peace and harmony and Kraft thanking him. Now, there's only one problem with my neat little theory, Mike Florio, and that is what if Robert Kraft has it has it em, em, emblazoned uh, on on everything that he believes that I we need to better our team? I want to get a high draft choice for Bill Belichick. You know, if we do let him go, just it's just my feeling after what Belichick has done for this franchise, which is everything. Uh, I think that I would just say we want you to go and good luck to you. Thanks for everything. I don't think he should be holding out for, I don't think he'd get a one for him right now, coaching next year at age 72. And is it worth really going to town for a second round draft choice for Bill Belichick? Now, look, I have no idea what the market would be. I don't know. I don't even know. Mike, you tell me, you tell me this, because I'd like to hear this. What teams would legitimately be interested in Bill Belichick? I can think of two if they make coaching changes, which we think that there's a chance they will, Washington or the Chargers. And look, Brandon Staley could still save his job. So maybe it's just Washington. 
And so I look at this now, and I'm not sure, will Chicago be interested in Bill Belichick? I doubt it. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't see an absolute clear path to where Bill Belichick is going. And I know there are some out there who believe that, oh, Belichick knows where he's going. He knows where he'll be next year. I, I, I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. So I think at the end of the day, I think that Kraft takes a very deep breath and uh, thanks Belichick for the memories. And they reach some sort of amicable financial settlement. Kraft may even just give Belichick everything. Who knows? I don't know what'll happen, but I think they will part more amicably than uh, than not. I think it's reasonable to suspect that arrangements are being made behind the scenes. Hypothetical conversations are occurring between Belichick and Kraft and also between Kraft and other owners who might be interested in Belichick. And if there is compensation to be given in light of the fact that Belichick has one year left on his contract, that compensation gets unofficially worked out now. The wheels get put in motion after there's a parting of the ways. The Patriots still have him under contract for one more year. That's a process that gets ugly if everyone isn't on board with it because Belichick could just say, fine, if you're going to insist on getting a draft pick for me, I'll come back and coach. So it has to be done delicately. It has to be done professionally. And there, there are leaps of faith that are made. But I got a couple of things to say. First, as to whether or not Belichick's going to want to keep coaching. You mentioned you haven't spoken to him in 17 years. I know why you haven't spoken to him in 17 years. He holds a grudge over your comments about Spygate. Well, that's one of the reasons he wants to catch Shula, some believe. Because Shula was yeah. over the top in his criticism of Belichick. He wants to catch Shula and stick it to Shula. People believe that. We don't know because he doesn't talk to anybody. But there's that theory out there that that's one of the reasons he's going to keep going. He wants to catch Shula because Shula criticized him heavily, heavily, and openly after Spygate. As to relates to the, the future... Throw the Buccaneers in there as teams that would be interested. I don't know that Belichick wants to follow the same trail that Tom Brady blazed to Tampa Bay. I think that would be weird. But they could be at the table as well as potentially interested. And I think the biggest factor in all of this, Peter, what guardrails, if any, get applied to Bill Belichick, the GM? Do they tell him you got to bring back Scott Pioli? Do they tell him you got to find a way to get Nick Casario from the Texans? Do they tell him you got to find somebody that's going to be your table setter. It can't just be you surrounded by people who aren't as skilled as Pioli and Casario going out there selecting the groceries before you cook the meal, to use Bill Parcell's line. I think that is the most important factor for wherever he goes next. How much power does he want beyond coaching? How much power will he get? And whatever he gets, what's he going to do with it? Because we've seen what he's done with absolute power. He's put together a team that before last night was two and ten. I, Mike, I, I know, I know this. If I'm an owner and I want to hire Bill Belichick, of course I feel him out first to to ask him what he thinks about personnel. His personnel acumen in the last few years has been abjectly disastrous. So I'm not giving him control of personnel. If he wants to coach the team. If he wants to cut the roster, good. You can cut the roster on Labor Day weekend. It's all yours. And you can coach the team with zero interference from anyone. However, you're not running the draft. If you want to run the draft, you can go do it somewhere else. You're not doing it here. You know, if you show me over and over and over again and again, I, I mean, you can, every team can pick out individual picks that didn't really work out. I'm just talking about this is, if you look at the canvas of Bill Belichick over the last few years in the draft, he's had some nice picks, you know, but overall, this team is exactly where it should be. This team is legitimately three and 10. And just like almost every team, you are what you say you are. That's why I don't think it's phony that the Giants 
were good last year. I don't think it's phony that the Giants went into Minnesota and won a playoff game. You know, some teams get hot sometimes. That's the way it is. Your coaches get hot. Your defense is playing well. The calls you make are right. You have a very positive frame of mind and you just win. That's great. But I don't think what's happened to the Giants this year is phony either. It is real. You are the way you play. You are what your record says you are. And that's why right now, Bill Belichick, I believe I'm right in saying this, is seven games below 500 since Tom Brady walked off campus. That isn't good enough. And the personnel side of it contributes to that mightily. So I, if I'm an owner, even if I'm a guy like Dean Spanos, and I don't draw many lines in the sand, if I'm a guy like Dean Spanos, if I'm Josh Harris in Washington, just because he's the great and powerful Oz, I'm not giving him control of my franchise after watching the last few years in New England. I'm just not. And that speaks to a related point. Beyond the fact that these owners all want to win games, it's also a business that hinges on getting your fan base, getting your customers sufficiently motivated to come to the games, buy tickets, spend their money on overpriced stuff, be excited, watch shows to see what's being said about their team, get fully engaged, consuming the content that the team itself makes available on the web and elsewhere. I don't know how excited fan bases are going to be about Bill Belichick. I posted a very unscientific poll on X the other day with the very simple question. If your team has a coaching vacancy after this season, do you want Bill Belichick? And, And who knows how accurate this ultimately is, but it's a pretty overwhelming no based upon the number of responses. The last time I checked, there were well over 10,000. So I, I I don't know how excited a fan base is going to get about Bill Belichick 2023. Bill Belichick 2013, 2018, yes. 2023, it's not going to be the way to sell out your season tickets the first day. You're not going to have a bunch of people buying you know, hoodies and ripping off the sleeves the day that Bill Belichick gets hired. So I, you better be damn sure he's going to turn you into a winner because it's not going to be the same thing as going out there and making a big splash in free agency and bringing in some player that's going to get everybody excited. I don't know how much excitement he's going to bring to a team that that is looking for some reason to believe that things are going to be dramatically better in the future. Yeah, it's interesting, Mike. You think about, you know, let's think about a team that really needs to get its fan base to fall in love with it. Let's talk about Washington right now. Let's talk about Josh Harris. What would happen right now if on the Beltway, uh, you know, the Circle Freeway around Washington, what would happen if you put a giant photo of Bill Belichick on a billboard (laughs) and you say, we're back, baby. With a Bill Belichick photo, <laughs> I want. I just wonder. I wonder, and you know, a burgundy and gold billboard. Okay, I wonder what would people think of that? Would they say ho hum? Would they say, oh, okay, credibility? That's great. Finally, we got somebody. The buck is going to stop with Belichick and all that. And and I guess my whole point is. You know, I remember one time I was talking to somebody when I used to cover the New York Giants and I mentioned the old cliche because it's been around for longer than I've uh, been doing this about, quote, winning the press conference, you know, with your head coach or with your first round draft pick or whatever. And, you know, the point was made to me that, you know, nothing matters about winning in January or February or April. It only matters if you actually win when the games are played. And so I don't know what the reaction would be by a fan base for Belichick's face to show up on a billboard. Would would there be excitement or would there be, oh God. You have to believe that you're going to win with him because the excitement (laughs) comes from the winning. And the commanders are in the unique position to still enjoy the afterglow of Dan Snyder is gone. So they don't need Bill Belichick 
to sell tickets and create excitement. There's still some baked in, thank God Snyder isn't here anymore, but Belichick would then have to win or the whole thing is a disaster. So you just wonder how that's going to play out. Let me flip it around. We got to go in a few minutes, but this is something that Chris and I were talking about yesterday, and I'm curious for your thoughts on this. Ed Bouchette, formerly the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and then more recently the Athletic, who's now retired but still does some radio in Pittsburgh, he said earlier this week that Art Rooney ordered Mike Tomlin to fire Matt Canada. And I believe that Art Rooney ordered Mike Tomlin to not give Bruce Arians a new contract back after the 2011 season. There's been a lot of that micromanaging of Tomlin since he became the coach in 2007. And from time to time, the question comes up, should the Steelers fire Mike Tomlin, which I think is ludicrous because Tomlin would get snatched up, I believe, by somebody else quickly. And then the Steelers would have to find someone else and who knows how it's going to work out. But do you think there's a chance Tomlin in his early 50s, he's been in Pittsburgh since 2007. Do you think maybe he's getting to the point, Peter, where he's thinking about, is this the right place for me? Is there a better spot for me? where I wouldn't be told by the owner what to do with my coaching staff, where I'd have a little more freedom to run the team as I see fit, where I wouldn't be saddled with some of the personnel decisions that maybe I'm involved in, maybe I'm not. I feel like they use a collective approach there, but ultimately Art Rooney's got a lot of say. He just doesn't wear it on his sleeve. So, And the team plays well, so nobody ever really points the finger at him. But do you think a coaching change could be on the table in Pittsburgh, not necessarily from the perspective of the team initiating it, but maybe Tomlin get to the point where he's kind of had enough and it's just time for a fresh start. It's time for change for the sake of change. Mike, every year there's one. Uh, I'll tell you what I think. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm always, I'm not shocked, but I'm always surprised whenever I'm in or around Pittsburgh at the level of discontent with Mike Tomlin. It just always surprises me. You know, I think um, that there are things to be unhappy with. Um, the offense is fairly prehistoric, even though there are some really good weapons on it. Um, they do things oftentimes at a glacial pace, which I think is frustrating for fans. Um, and so I understand that. But I think overall, my point is winning is hard. It's just really, really hard. You know, Bill Belichick in his career, his coach 29 years, this will be his eighth losing season. Eight in 29 years. So Mike Tomlin, this is his 16th year. In the previous 15, he's had zero losing seasons. And for those, oh, you know, throw your stats in your pocket they don't mean anything. He's only won one Super Bowl, all that stuff. I get it. I know there's dissatisfaction. But all I can say with Mike Tomlin, all I can say is be careful what you wish for. That's all I'm saying. How many coaches right now who started Mitchell Trubisky against a good defensive team on national TV last night, how many people are winning the game? And again, the Steelers probably should have won the game. They handed uh, the Patriots some points. I get it. I understand it. But in general, in general, I think it's hard to win. And I think Mike Tomlin, without a franchise quarterback, has a better record than Bill Belichick without his franchise quarterback. And just remember, I'm not Confucius but I will just say for the third time in the last 90 seconds, it's hard to win in the NFL. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.